Hello, good morning! In this video, we are going to talk about community-based disaster risk reduction and management. So the learning competency for this video is to discuss different community-based practices for managing disaster risk to specific hazards. So here, you will learn the different practices of different countries. Why? Let's start with the good practices for DRR. In this lecture, four initiatives done in different parts of the world are presented. These are considered good practices because they provide an indication of the successes achieved so far and an idea of what could be achieved in the future. So by the end of this video, you will be asked to identify the key points why the following are considered best practices. And of course, you will be asked to come up with your own plan to develop a community-based practice for managing particular hazards. Ma'am. No ma'am. So first, there are two projects about raising awareness. So they are namely School Children as Disaster Risk Reduction Catalysts and Initiators. This project is from Thailand. Another one is the teaching guide and quiz competitions help enhance preparedness. So this is from Grenada. And another two in promoting prevention. So first is the children assess their own vulnerabilities plan risk reduction, which is here in the Philippines, and the annual earthquake and safety drills in all schools across the country from Iran. Let us start with the school children as disaster risk reduction catalysts and initiators. So only after the December 2004 Asian tsunami disaster that disaster risk reduction or DRR has been a focus of interest in Thailand. So in 2006, a project called Child-Led Disaster Risk Reduction or CLDRR initiated. So the basic principle of the project was children and youth can play active role in community affairs that are relevant to them, especially if they are appropriately trained and supported by the adult. So this is done by building children's knowledge of DRR and community risk. Another step is building the capacity of children for DRR actions. And number three, sensitizing adults like communities and schools on the importance of involving children in the RR and other issues relevant to them. So of course, the role of this project is to promote the idea of child-led DRR among tsunami-affected communities and among its local partners by means of material, presentations, and visits. Another role of this project is to build the CLDRR capacity of local partners, staff, and volunteers through training workshops on key DRR concepts, how to develop community risk and resource maps, how to conduct an educational campaign for DRR, and other refresher training as needed by local partners. And lastly, to provide technical and other support for the project design and implementation process, including developing a training toolkit or manual on CLDRR, on-the-job training for partners or OJT, and regular monitoring visits to project locations. So based on this, what do you think will the impacts and the lessons learned be? Wait lang po! I hope you can answer that question. Now, let's talk about the impacts of this project. One of the impact is that people, particularly children and teachers, have received information and instruction on how to cope better with disasters. So teachers have been exposed to a new alternative approach to child-centered learning, new issues on disaster risk reduction, and a starting point for including DRR into their school curricula. And another impact is the targeted communities have benefited from learning from the children and are making use of the children's outputs, such as a risk and resource maps and educational campaigns. So what are the lessons learned? So they learned that support from adults, especially from teachers, community members, and project staff is a key factor. 
children can and are willing to participate, right? And lastly, children participatory projects must involve both children and adults. Okay, now let's go to the next program, which is the teaching guide and quiz competitions help enhance preparedness from Grenada. Okay, so as you all know, Grenada is a Caribbean state that, like the Philippines, gets affected by tropical cyclones, right? So, poor preparedness and response during Hurricane Ivan in 2004 indicated that the awareness and understanding of risk were insufficient in all sectors of their society. Because of that, a teaching guide intended for grades 3 to 5 on disaster preparedness was developed under the joint coordination of the Ministry of Education and UNICEF in Grenada. So training sessions were also conducted to train teachers on how to prevent disasters. So the teaching guide helped the teachers organize the annual National Disaster Awareness Week primary school quiz. So this is a competition and teachers prepare their learners for the event. So what are the impacts of this project? So they saw that there was an increase in the participation and level of knowledge of grade 5 learners in National Disaster Awareness Week primary school quiz. So as a result of the training, disaster-related discussions began in school, where teachers and school administrators shared their experiences of Hurricane Ivan and stressed the importance of psychological first aid resources. Subsequently, disaster managers learned to incorporate psychological first aid into their presentations to schools and school groups. Thank you! <sighs> so they learned a lot of things. So first, they learned that a single teaching guide can make a difference in increasing awareness and knowledge of disaster reduction among school learners, teachers, and the public at large. So organizers had to be sensitive with regard to the competing schools workload at that time of year, which includes school activities and commitments. Lastly, school quiz requires a coordinator with excellent organization skills to manage the scope of preparations necessary for a national level activity. Also, the support from the body which has control over primary schools. So in the Philippines, that is the Department of Education. Who said? Jesus. Okay. Now let's go to the project present in our country, which is the children assess their own vulnerabilities plan risk reduction. So you have to know that more than half of the population at risk in the Philippines are children. Yet their specific vulnerabilities, needs, and capacities have not been addressed, nor has their potential role in DRR has been recognized. So to address this, a project called Child-Oriented Participatory Risk Assessment and Planning, or COPRAP, was implemented. So the project promoted disaster planning for children through development of tools that help children identify their own needs, vulnerabilities, and capacities. Subsequently, the community adopted DRR measures that benefited both the children and the rest of the community. More importantly, the project paved the way for local level initiatives towards an integrated and sustainable approach to development. So one of the impacts is the project was sustainable and it paved the way for local level initiatives toward an integrated and sustainable approach to development. And it also debunked the notion that disaster management is solely the responsibility of adults. And they learned that children can play specific roles before, during, and after a disaster, such as preparation of supplies or other basic needs. In addition to food and clothing, children have a primary need for educational material such as books, bags, pencils, and notebooks. So questionnaires and activities help understand the needs of a community before, during, and after a disaster, okay? 
and going to the last project, which is the annual earthquake and safety drills in all schools across the country. So this is from Iran, right? So Iran has sought to educate children and youngsters on disaster preparedness at all school levels on a national scale in both urban and rural areas. Earthquake and safety programs have been carried out in the country since 1991 by the Iran-based International Institute of Earthquake Engineering and Seismology or the IIEES. And school safety programs have been underway since 1996. So the initiative called Earthquake and Safety Drills in School is a part of serious activities aimed at protecting people, especially children, from the impacts of future comprehensive program that addresses all groups in society. Okay, so the impacts of this project are the following. The drills have helped expand a seismic safety culture, spread the drill experience to non-school areas, and make earthquake and safety a national activity. It also promotes culture of safety at all levels of society and increases children's knowledge and share this knowledge with their families, friends, and community. So what are some of the lessons learned? They learned that education plays a key role in promoting safety measures against earthquakes and spreading them in society. They also learned that a major challenge initially was to secure the cooperation of many institutions and organizations such as mass media. So this was overcome through persistent advocacy and continuous follow-up to secure cooperation of many institutions. Hey, <laughs> 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 <laughs>